propaganda regime, which is also against the law, but they put that big propaganda story forward about how Iraq had ties with Al Qaeda and they were, you know, training terrorists to attack the United States and Saddam was friends with o Osama bin Laden and everything like that. And now if you bring that up, they say, oh, that's not true. They, they never said any of that stuff. But I want to remind you, and I still have the video somewhere on my computer, about the, uh, the, the American soldiers in the square doing that photo op, tearing down the, the statue of Saddam. Remember that? But before they tore it down, they put up a ladder and a GI climbed it and draped a big old American flag over the head of the statue of Saddam. And what was the significance of that flag? Why, that was the flag that flew over the Pentagon when the terrorist attack occurred and struck the Pentagon, whatever it was. So they took that Pentagon flag and hand carried it to Iraq to avenge the cruel, unjust deed that they had perpetrated on our public. And they spread that flag over. I bet that soldier feels pretty stupid now that he fell for the con job they gave him. You know, since Saddam didn't have anything at all to do with it, and that they lied to our troops to get them to go fight innocent people and kill innocent people. Okay, we just got a call. Next caller. Hello, Bill, and um, I'm, I'm very pleased that you keep up this show because it must be kept up. Uh, it is difficult to anticipate whether any more official action will be taken towards uh, finding the truth about this. But although I'm always leery of of accepting my version of another, to me the building number seven remain, remains still the most the most the most outstanding evidence that the thing was a was an artificial the was smoking gun. Aid. However, however, the the point of I've just uh, as a conversation item, as an evening conversational item, is this. Again, it is not a great truth, but it is true. Why don't, part of the reason why so many people have difficulty in abandoning an idea that this was not, this was a terrorist act, and so the government has nothing, is the counterpart of another situation in which many people find themselves, and this has to do with religion and miracles, particularly miracles of, uh, they typically happen in very poor countries with you, there are, there are Madonnas that, that cry, there are, there's, there's blood that melts, and right. all sorts of other stuff. It's, of course, it has been proven over and over that this is a fantasy. There's no ground, no ground on facts whatsoever. And yet, if you're trying to tell this type of people, if you have to call them, or so many, that, look, but this couldn't possibly be true. You know, it, it cannot possibly be true. They still hang on to the idea. And so it is the same mental geometry or architecture that forbids... Turned, uh, turned, uh, 100, turned 180 degrees yeah. for which people to understand it, that, yes, there's something should be done in order to understand better with what, even on the obvious evidence, including the, the proofs that, or the, the, that you have shown, uh, this prevents them from, from, from deciding, yes, it should be done. They will hang on to their ideas. However, dissonance. even so, as I said, Please continue to do it. Thank you. Because um, I will, every now and then, when I will find it, I will, I will now stop, but I will make, people, make sure that people also are aware of these details that you that brought up uh, every time, including the one about the firefighter. I'm glad I turned on the oh, yeah. turn on the hospital Eric fighting Ryan. show. So keep on going. Thank you, and have a good holiday. Thank you. You too. Yeah, that, we have one more caller. I, I guess we'll just go straight to that other caller so we don't waste any time here. Okay. Oh, thank you. I didn't know you were still here. <laughs> okay. Next caller. Oh, yeah, I'm on. I guess so. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were sorry. Saying... I had uh, I'm going to turn the sound off here. Okay. Yeah, if you have a TV set going in the background, it'll be confusing. Yeah. Okay. So, um, 9/11 was an inside job, huh? Uh. It... That's the only conclusion you can come to since the Arabs could not have possibly gotten into those secure buildings to plant the explosives. Somebody with security clearance had to do it. Okay, so... That's, that's the logic of it. We don't have any other evidence, but you can't put explosives in the building. 
operating from a cave in Tora Bora. Okay, let's um, let's talk about the actual logistics. Just let's let's just say, for the sake of argument, that there were explosives on there. Right, and we know that it takes two, three months, maybe more, of planning, and about the same to install the explosives. So it's not something that they just do suddenly, secretly. So okay, just to, okay, just as a just as another okay. So let's say that we did install this over a certain amount of time. Logistically, how many people would that take? I don't really know, but I've heard people estimate that, you know, 10 people for making, you know, 10 trips, and I don't know. It, it, we're talking about pallets of, of explosive, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds to the thousands of pounds. They've, they've extrapolated from what they found in the residue that there had to be, you know, maybe 10,000 pounds of explosives installed in the building. Um, well, as a former Army demolitionist, 10,000 pounds would have blown that thing clear apart. I mean, the shock, the shock wave would have oh, well, been I have blowing a up for windows you. See, one uh, of the you things, know, a mile and a half away. I, I see what you're saying, and that, that, that I have to take your word for that. Um, the thing that, that, that I observed, and this is just my own personal observation, was that, you know, any perpetrators may, in the towers themselves may have had access to the central elevator shafts, which gave them access to the floors and, you know, the space between floors and things like that. But they never had access to the supporting structure on the outside of the building. And that's why, con you know, different from which other these kind of buildings demolitions... Do not the, 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 and sorry to interrupt you, but the, these kind of buildings, we can agree on this, these kind of buildings do not, the superstructure is built internally. And then things things are it's it's like a Christmas tree. Well, the outside part was a major part of this of the support for this building. Um, it's not just like the standard steel structure. But let me get to the conclusion of what I was saying: that they could only place the explosives to bring the building down in the shafts. So they that's why you see such a tremendous explosion. Instead of you know just sufficient to bring down a building, they had to place explosions in the center shafts and have them powerful enough to blow the outside parts apart, and that explains why there's such a giant mushroom cloud on the thing. Okay, uh, well, you, you've um, have you ever been around ex explosions or you know seen them on YouTube and this and that? Oh yeah, well I've seen them, but I've never done any myself. Okay. <laughs> as long as you can see them, you can you can get the the spirit of it. Very small explosions, even 45, 50 pounds of explosive, which, you know, that's the thing. You can, you can clear some pretty good stuff with that. A 40 or 50 pound C4 charge, let's say, will, make, will create a mushroom cloud. Now, an explosive from fuel will also create a mushroom cloud, which is, well, it's kind of weird, but it's just how smoke falls. But the fuel was all gone over an hour or almost an hour before the buildings collapsed and exploded, so the fuel wasn't a part of that at all. Even the government admits that within the first 10 minutes, all of the jet fuel was burned up or gone. So, okay, so we're not, okay, the, expo the explosion you're talking about was not, um, um, <laughs> my nose on 9 was, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm watching the TV at the same time. Uh, I was just reading the, uh, the airplane. Oh, yeah, the bomb my nose on 9-11 was an inside job. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we, we should talk about Obama here, if you don't mind continue chatting. Um, just just logistically, though, to logistically, it is possible, and I'll, get, I'll give you that. Um, what bothers me, though, how come no one has come forward? Well, because they'd have to admit to a severe felony and, and face the charges. I mean... <laughs> But, I mean, but, but the way to do it, though, you're right. Somebody could needs to come forward, and the way we coax them to come forward is we say, okay, the first ten people that come forward and spill their guts get total immunity, or something like do, that. Do, do you honestly let's let's say that this this thing was a was an inside job? Do you honestly think that there are people like that that actually did that? You, I mean, you really think there were Americans you, that committed this? Well, yeah, absolutely. I don't think that. Well, do, you, do, you, this, do, you, do you think they were brought forth from hey, we know CIA? From, we know from Ollie North's testimony that he's willing to do whatever they tell him. And so are lots of other people. I mean, there are lots of people that will do anything. And they compartmentalize the operation to the point where they don't know what the big picture is. They don't have that moral problem to overcome. 
I don't see a problem with that. Only a handful of people had to know what was really going on. The rest are just following the procedures that were set up for them by, you know, I, the thing is, that's what the investigation needs to reveal. But but, but now, like, you, you know, you, about wait a minute, you, you were know, talking about explosives. And do you have any experience with these so-called nano explosives that they're now advertising now, 10 years after the fact, that are more, uh, okay. more bang explain, for the buck? Explain what a nano explosive is to me. And I'm, I'm probably familiar with it, but it's just a guy. There's a lot of terminology that gets thrown around, and there's certain type of explosives that I'll hear about it, and it'll just be a buzzword for it, and I'll be like, oh, it's, it's uh, you know, people say, you know, just for example, like EFP, but it's just a shape charge, you know, it's, it's things like that. Well, we're talking about these scientists that have, uh, you know, photo micrographs of the nano-sized particles that are only built from the atomic level up. They're, you know, so it implies... Well, everything is built from an atomic level up. What's that? Everything's built from the atomic level up. No, some things you grind up, you know, like aluminum powder. Sometimes you just grind up aluminum for, to make the powder. This you can't be made that way. You start at the atomic level and build up, according to Niels Herrett. But anyway, well, we're getting down close to the end here. Um, well, you, you're talking about like an ammonium nitrate aluminum bomb. Yeah, the, I, I, I don't, I'm not an expert on that. That's supposedly what took down the... Uh, uh, Murrow building, right, in Oklahoma City? Uh, that one was actually uh, fertilizer. That's what the, Right on. Well, there's a group now, uh, We Are Change Oklahoma, that's putting out a documentary that's supposed to uh, turn some eyes. Anyway, i got to let you go. We're at the end of okay. the show. Can I, can I have one final word? Yes, go for it. Okay. I have lots of friends that have done... We call it OGA, other government agency work, where that was like the CAA in South America and all that kind of stuff. These guys. interruption this could have been real the NDAA could take my show off the air and declare me a terrorist or it could declare you a terrorist for watching it I make my apologies to the caller and uh, if you call back on the next show I'll give you you know your free say well I wasn't editing what you were saying I was just making a point that should have shocked a lot of people we're not that far from that happening. They've activated the FEMA camps. They're asking for 100,000 people to take jobs as internment specialists. So it's, you know, martial law is really happening now. All these years we've been talking about it, and we've been called conspiracy nuts. We've been called insane. We've been called liars. We've been called anti-American. The truth is coming out now. It doesn't feel good, though. It doesn't feel good to be vindicated. It doesn't feel good to know that we've been right on the entire time, that we haven't misled you, and that now the truth comes out and backs us up on what we've been saying. It doesn't feel good because now, now I'm afraid. I'm really afraid that our country may never, ever be what they told me it was when I was a kid. I realize now that it was, it never has been a force for truth or justice. I just hope it will be someday.